Happy Sunday! My name is Nick Hester, pastor here at Faith Luther Mission Church. Good morning to everyone sitting in our pews. Good morning to everyone who is watching us online. As you notice, we've got something extra up here this morning, these beautiful flowers up here. And if you notice, it, it, to get a chance to come up here after the service, you'll see this container here is all filled with shells. There's a story behind that. The flowers are actually for the celebration of uh, for, uh, Molly and Don. If Don was still around today, today would have been their 70th wedding anniversary. Oh, wow. Amazing. So this is in memorandum for, for Don and uh, a celebration of that many years together. And Don passed away earlier this year. Now these shells were actually collected by Don and Molly when they were out, when they were out on the road uh, doing their trucking thing. And they were down at the Padre Island and picked up the shells. So, kind of a nice history behind all that, too. Here's a picture of the lovely couple right there. So, uh, Molly, I know it's a tough day for you today. Because we missed Don, too. So, Lord, so Lord bring her strength. And remember those uh, awesome memories that they've got together. And they will come that again when you're both dancing on the streets of gold. So. All of us, too. At least I'm praying for all of us to be dancing on the streets of gold. And if you're not, and you don't know that you're going to be dancing on the streets of gold, let's talk. Okay? So we make sure that you are. A couple of announcements we have going on here. Starting today, we're actually starting a new, a new sermon series. We just completed the um, Attributes of God. Today, we're starting the Apostles' Creed. We're going to take apart the Apostles' Creed, line by line. And we sing this every Sunday. The Apostles' Creed, but, but now we're going to dig deeper and find out what do those words mean to us? What should they mean to us? So starting today, we're going to take a look at God the Father, Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. August 20th, next month. If you come to the front doors, be here. Because we're going to be over at Phoenix Park on August 20th. 20th, we're going to be doing our combined worship service with Saving Grace Lutheran Church and uh, outdoor service. So let's already start praying for good weather on that day. That service will be at 10.30 a.m. with uh, our wonderful maestro playing for us during, during that day. Also, Andy, yeah, you're stuck with me preaching too. So the service will be at 10.30, followed by the Saving Grace guys are going to be doing a uh, barbecue grilling afterwards for lunch. So Stay for after the service for that. It's just going to be a, a $5 donation requested for the meal, and that will be on August 20th. September, now we're moving along, right along here. August 8th, which is a Tuesday, we're going to be having the floor downstairs in the fellowship area and the carpet up here clean. Now, you know, we've got a, we had a new carpet up here a few years ago, but it's due for a little touch up, shall we say. And so uh, we're going to have it professionally clean upstairs, and then we're also going to have the floor downstairs completely refinished as well. That will be Tuesday the 8th. Now, with that, the Sunday previous to that, the 6th, we're asking for all hands on deck to help with being able, after a fellowship, to be able to move the tables and chairs out of that area so that they have easy access to be able to do the floor downstairs. So, August 6th, a couple of Sundays from today, we'll need help with that. I'll be making announcements as time goes on. Last thing, you know, I don't have a sweet and sour pork box up with me here, but uh, you guys have a lot of here. There it is. Chris has got one back there. Coming up next Sunday, yeah, five Sundays in July. And are we starting this tradition now? Thank you, Marianne, for that. It's a good idea. Then on the, the months that we have five Sundays, on the fifth Sunday, we're going to collect these thank you boxes. They look like uh, leftover uh, Chinese cuisine boxes. And we, they're all free back there. We've got some extra back there. If you don't have one, pick one up. And as you go out throughout your week and you got a, something to praise God for, something to thank God for, throw something in there. Whether it's coins in your pocket or, or dead presidents, whatever it is, throw it in there. Yeah, so you can give your thanks to the Lord. Now what we're going to do is on the fifth Sunday of any given month, we're going to collect all those, put them in a bucket right up here, and it's all going to go, go towards our general operations fund. So that's going to be collected next Sunday. So if you don't have a box, pick one up. If you have a box, bring it in, fill it out. Okay? Super. All right. I think I'm doing pretty good here. Anybody else have any uh, anything to add there? 
top to get anything? Nope. All right. Let's worship the Lord. We're going to be working out in the green hymnal today. Our opening hymn is, I'll hear the power of Jesus' name. Number 328. Please rise as you are able. Right there 
at this time today. <laughs> Love this guy. Yes, we'll shake her So, it's going to be just the one verse, and we're going to sing it twice. You? <laughs> You got the music? Just play it out before we get it. I love it. This is awesome. Father cares for his children, so does the Lord care for those who fear him. 
for he himself knows where we are made. He remembers that we are but dust. The second lesson today comes from the 11th chapter of Hebrews, verses 1 through 3. Faith is the confidence that what we hope for will actually happen. It gives us assurance about things we cannot see. Through their faith, the people in days of old earned a good reputation. By faith, we understand that the entire universe was formed at God's command, that what we now see did not come from anything that can be seen. Here is the reading of the lessons. Please rise for the gospel as you are able.
Saint Anselm of Canterbury, who lived in the, the 11th century, he had it spot on when he prayed these words, Lord, I do not seek to understand that I may believe. I believe that I may understand. So for the next couple of months, we're going to study the Apostles' Creed, which is the foundation of the Christian faith and what we believe. Now, the Apostle Creed had actually developed quickly in the life of the church, and we began to see various forms as soon as the early part of the second century. The Creed's development was important because there were those who were spreading false teachings about God, which was contrary to what Jesus taught. And the rumors were flying about who Jesus was. Some were saying that he was a prophet. Others understood Jesus to merely be a great teacher. Now these same rumors were around even when Jesus was with the disciples. We take a look back at Matthew chapter 16, verses 13 through 14. Scripture tells us this. When Jesus came to the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, Who do people say the Son of Man is? Well, they replied, Some say John the Baptist, some say Elijah, and others say Jeremiah or one of the other prophets. But because Jesus wanted his disciples to know and express the real truth about him, Jesus turns to them and asks in verse 15, But who do you say I am? And Peter, in that great statement of faith that is the distillation of all truth, answers in verse 16, You are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. And those words actually became the first Christian creed. To be a Christian is to accept and submit to the truth of the gospel. Jesus proclaims this truth in the Gospel of John, chapter 3, verse 18. Jesus says this, There is no judgment against anyone who believes in him. But anyone who does not believe in him has already been judged for not believing in God's one and only Son. Our faith must be specific. Now the second thing we need to understand is that faith calls for surrender. If you can't accept the basic truths of God's Word, in which Christians since the time of Jesus have understood and believed, then you need to take a serious look at where you are spiritually. You have the right to believe whatever you want. However, you do not have the right to reject biblical, historic, Christian teaching and still call your beliefs Christian. A complete and total surrender to God's truth is needed. Too many people want to reject the Christ of the Bible and substitute him with a Christ of their own liking, while still continuing to call themselves a Christian. Now, they have every right to believe what they want to believe. However, they do not, according to Scripture, have the right to call themselves Christian. The culture of today wants us to believe that there is no ultimate truth with a capital T. But many little truths, or even shades of truth. However, that's not what the Bible says. Jesus himself proclaims in John chapter 14, verse 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one can come to the Father except through me. And if we claim to be a Christian, we need to submit our minds and our hearts to that truth. Capital T. 
The gospel is not an argument or a piece of reasoning designed to convince. It's only an announcement. And the astounding thing about this announcement is the fact that it, it pierces our hearts in a direct clash. And this direct clash has an aim to reverse our hearts completely and set them going in the very opposite direction of where we are often inclined to go. The reality is, though, to submit to that truth, we first have to believe it. Let's take a look at Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6. It says this, And it is impossible to please God without faith. Anyone who wants to come to him must believe that God exists and that he rewards those who sincerely seek him. When we say in the Apostles' Creed, I believe in God the Father, there comes a, a peace and a confidence in surrendering to that truth. I walked into the night not long ago when I looked up into the heavens and found myself praying these words, God, forgive us. Forgive us for thinking we are in charge of this world. As if we are the only ones who exist and there's no other. Forgive us for thinking we are moving and changing the world and that you have nothing to say and nothing to do about it. Forgive us, Lord, for deluding ourselves, for refusing to, to believe that there is no higher form of life other than ourselves. Forgive our foolishness and forgive our pride. Folks, we don't need faith for God's sake. Faith is needed for our sake. And there's so many who do not believe because they don't understand. They feel that if it doesn't make sense to them, then it just cannot be. And, and that's the height of what it means to be egocentric. The belief is, is much like the, uh, envision this one, a small boy. He was seen digging a hole along the beach, just a small hole along the beach, and there was a trench running from the sea to that little hole in the sand. Someone asked him what he was doing, and he said, I'm draining the ocean. Trying to un understand everything before we believe anything just doesn't work. It's like thinking we can make a, a little trench from heaven directly to us, and we can drain heaven's ocean dry with all the knowledge of God. And that uh, we have enough pride to think that it can all fit into our little lines. The truth is, we just can't possibly understand it all. The Bible confirms this. Second book of Corinthians, chapter 5, verse 7. For we live by believing and not by seeing. Folks, faith comes before understanding, not after understanding. Faith is accepting and believing what God has revealed about himself in the scriptures. Because we know we can't understand everything about who God is and all that he does. So this brings us to the third important fact to understand about faith. And that is that the faith must be sufficient. A big God calls for a big faith. You can't have a little faith or a partial faith. It must be a complete faith. You can't choose to believe some things and, and not others. It's all or nothing in God's word. Listen to these words from Hebrews chapter 11, verses 1 through 3, which we just heard from a few moments ago. Faith is the confidence that what we 
hope for will actually happen. It gives us assurance about things we cannot see. Through their faith, the people in days of old earned a good reputation. By faith, we understand that the entire universe was formed at God's command. That what we now see did not come from anything that can be seen. Saying that we do not believe in God is like walking up to Mount Everest and shouting at the mountain that we no longer believe it exists. We can shout all we please, and for as long as we like. However, the mountain will live, uh, live on long after we and our doubts are gone. God also will continue to exist whether or not we believe in him. Our denials will not affect God so much as they will affect us. Our lack of faith will not affect God's existence one iota. However, it most certainly will affect our existence, both in this world and in the world to come. Now I want you to understand that this doesn't mean you're never going to have any questions. We will always have questions. And there always will be some things we don't understand. However, the Apostles' Creed says that He is God, the Father Almighty. And so often, when we understand and believe in the bigness of God, the bigness of the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, when we believe in that and keep that in our heads and our hearts, so many of our questions become already answered. In the book of Acts, chapter 17, Scripture tells us that the Apostle Paul went to Greece to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. When he arrives in Athens, he saw a pagan altar, and underneath were the words, to an unknown God. Seeing the altar, Paul said them to them in verses 23 through 28, For as I was walking along, I saw your many shrines, and one of your altars had this inscription on it, to an unknown God. This God, whom you worship without knowing, is the one I'm telling you about. He is the God who made the world and everything in it. Since he is Lord of heaven and earth, he doesn't live in man-made temples, and human hands can't serve his needs, for he has no needs. He, gives, he himself gives life and breath to everything, and he satisfies every need. From one man he created all the nations throughout the whole earth. He decided beforehand when they should rise and fall, and he determined their boundaries. His purpose was for the nations to seek after God and perhaps feel their way toward him and find him, though he is not far from any one of us. For in him we live and move and exist. You see, folks, there's not only a God, but he truly is almighty. And he is powerful enough to create all things that now exist. Our faith must be sufficient. Now, the fourth truth that we need to understand about faith is that faith must be personal. The faith that you have is a very personal faith. And because it is a personal faith, it must be a faith in a personal God. We say in the Apostles' Creed, I believe in God the Father Almighty. God is a person. And, and the word faith Father gives God a personality. So he is not only a God who is absolutely holy and powerful, he is also a God who loves you and can be approached. 
God is not just the, the man upstairs. He is more than just a mind behind the universe and the laws of nature. God is so much more than some kind of ultimate being or, or supernatural force. We say, I believe in God, the Father. He is a fatherly God who desires a relationship with us. What a privilege this is for us. We not only believe in a God Almighty, but we can believe in a God who is our Father. We can actually know Him. God can be intimate to each one of us and be real to each one of us. So to say that God the Father Almighty is just a mind and power behind our universe and just an impersonal force whose only interest is to keep the machinery of nature in operation is as absurd as believing that God doesn't exist at all. God is so much more than just an impersonal intelligence. He is irresistible joy. He is rapturous beauty. He is and has an eternal and inexhaustible love. And he comes to us and opens himself to us for fellowship. That is the God, the Father Almighty, that every Christian should believe in. And God's personality is expressed in his creation. The Bible tells us in Romans chapter 1, verse 20, and reminds us that for ever since the world was created, people have seen the earth and sky. Through everything God made, they can clearly see his invisible qualities, his eternal power, and divine nature. So, they have no excuse for not knowing our God. Our Almighty Father, God's desire for variety in this world is seen in the difference in, in each snowflake every fingerprint, and the enormous varieties in, in plants, and trees, and even people. Everything about him is beautiful. And it's expressed in his creativeness. We see it every time a flower blooms. We see it in a baby's touch. We hear it in music. We smell it in the spring and summer air. Everything God does is good and beautiful. Mighty as he is and, and ins insignificant as we are, God has shown his love for us and expresses his <coughs> desire to know us. And so all we can do is lay at his feet, subdued by his strength, awed by his almighty majesty and won by his love. So here's a question for you. If you believe in God, what kind of God do you believe in? A man upstairs? An impersonal force behind nature? An ultimate being? Or a God who is not only real, but also personal. <laughs> the thing is, though, if you really do believe in a very real God who desires for you to also know Him, you can't just stop there. Belief requires action. So if you do believe God is personal. Have you allowed him to be personal with you? Have you opened your heart and gotten to know him and let him know you? In the Apostles' Creed we say, I believe 
and God the Father Almighty. Folks, when you say these words, know and believe that you have an Almighty Father God who loves you and wants to be with you and help you through whatever you are experiencing in your life. Let us pray. Father God Almighty, we thank you that you love us. Even with our doubts and our questions, Lord God, we humbly surrender ourselves to your almighty presence in our lives. And so we proclaim confidently, I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. And it is in the holy name of your Son, Jesus, that we pray. Amen. Amen. Our next hymn is a, a classic. I bring a real classic a doxology, as it's known as. Praise to the Lord, the Almighty. Short one, but a good one. Still in the green hymn, we have number 543.
I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Lord God, we are a church of faith. It's in our name. And Lord, part of that faith is in you as, as Father God Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Lord, we stand by that. We stand by everything in the scripture as a church, Lord. Help us as we go out those front doors in our mission field, Lord, to proclaim that truth, that your son Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. And the only way to you is through him. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord God, we thank you. Thank you. One of the many attributes of you, Father God, is as your Jehovah Rapha, the healing God. Lord, you've healed so many people here in this congregation today, Lord. And we thank you and give you the glory for that. Lord, there's many people on our hearts and minds at this time that are, are still in need of that healing touch to come down. Lord, come send your Jehovah Rapha down now to all of those people who are on our hearts and minds. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for healing of this nation, Lord. We've turned away from you, Lord. And we're going we're gonna to come back. We're going to come back to being one nation under God. We're going to come back to trusting in you, in God that we trust. Lord, as a congregation, we promise to pray for this nation. We promise to pray for the nation's leaders, Lord, that they make decisions according to your will, and not their own agenda. Lord, we pray for your strength. We pray for your guidance and discernment to touch us and to touch this nation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. <clears throat> Father God, we pray for all those soldiers that are fighting far from their homes and friends and family. Fighting for those freedoms that we enjoy here as a nation. Lord, protect them. Keep them safe. Lord, surround them with people who can bring them the truth of, of your gospel and your son Jesus. To touch them and let them know where their, their eternal hope lies. Lord, bring them home safe. Reunite them with their families. And, and Lord, help us as a nation to stand by them as they stood by for us. Lord, in your mercy. Hear yeah. yeah. our prayer. We God, we pray for all those law enforcement personnel, fire department personnel, ambulance, first responders, even emergency room personnel, Lord, who are out there serving us. Protect them. Keep them safe, Lord. Help us as a community to, to support them as they serve us. Lord, in your mercy, yeah. hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for all those missionaries that we support individually and as a congregation. Lord, they're, they're soldiers themselves fighting on the front lines for your gospel. <coughs> protect them, Lord. Protect their health, Lord. Health of the families. Protect them from any kind of human evil and evil of Satan. Lord, please provide them with the resources that they need to do those ministries you've called them to. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Yeah. If there's anyone who has any prayers that they'd like to make at this time, please go ahead and say them. Lord, we know that we have prayed for your healing, but we bring before you the name of Betty and Vern Veneer. We ask that you will give them strength and courage for whatever the problem may be, small or large. We ask that your love will overshadow them yes, Lord. and keep them always in your presence. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. <laughs>
hear our prayer. prayer. <clears throat> Into your hands, O oh Lord, we commit all for whom we pray. Those who prayed for our Lord and those who prayed for our hearts, trusting in the mercy of your Son, Jesus. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. Please share the peace of God with one another.
May the Lord be gracious to you. May the Lord shine his face upon you and give you his everlasting strength and peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. <coughs> Excuse me. Our closing hymn is uh, another classic. He leadeth me, O blessed thought. We're still in the green hymnal yet. Number 501.